How to make this friendly war plausible? I'm trying to come up with this scenario in a sort of medieval fantasy setting. There are two towns. One, Kertiden, is a large city with all the appropriate tropes, while the smaller town, Siege, is a sort of satellite town. The reason Siege exists, is that hundreds, or however long ago it has to be, of years ago, a foreign power from a faraway land actually laid siege to Kertiden. But the siege was never officially lifted and it developed into an actual town, so there is a noticeable mix of cultures between the two towns. The people of Siege are mostly made of descendants of the actual soldiers involved in the original siege. But now, there is no animosity between Siege and Kertiden, it's not even a cold war, they peacefully coexist, trade with each other, travel back and forth, etc. And although officially there is a state of war between their countries, it is known as the friendly war or perhaps jokingly, sarcastically called the forgotten war. For some reason the side that laid the siege is not motivated to officially end hostilities. OTOH, Kertiden's country doesn't interfere with siege, e.g. doesn't collect taxes from there or doesn't enforce laws there. It's a bit of a running joke in the towns. E.g. one might quip, we're at war, if asked why they've run out of potatoes, or during some harmless disagreement. My question is, how can this plausibly happen? How did they get from a state of actual war to this situation, and why does the country that actually contains Kertiden tolerate siege existing? Note, whether magic exists or not in this world isn't really relevant, I'd like a non-magical explanation for this. The kingdom that founded Siege has collapsed so it can't officially declare an armistice. Siege don't want to publicly admit this. There is no king to declare an end to hostilities anymore. The people of Siege may think of their kingdom how early medieval Europe thought of the Roman Empire, not willing to admit it's gone, occasionally getting behind restoration attempts e.g. the Holy Roman Empire. If the people of Siege declare an end to the war with their own authority, they admit the kingdom they love has failed, and publicly give up hope of ever restoring it. As long as they consider themselves subjects of this old kingdom, they cannot and will not take on the divine kingly task of deciding when wars end. It's part of their cultural identity, maybe even their religion, if they consider the monarch to be divinely chosen. 